was a good morning's work. Yes, you were a bit busy. Yes, I'm happy to say. <laughs> Money. That's all you're ever worried about. You didn't tell me. No, no, I'm not going to have you lad squabbling. You've worked very hard. And I'm going to treat you both to lunch. Fantastic. How about wheelers and some lobster tammy door? Ooh, what a delightful thought. Hello, Dr. White and surgery. No, I'm afraid Dr. Hudson isn't here anymore. I'm standing in for him. Can I help you? Mr. Medwin. Well, how is he now? Right, well, don't do anything and I'll be over as soon as I can. All right? Bye-bye. I'm sorry, it seems one of our patients has been taken seriously ill. Mr. Medwin. Yes, do you know anything about him? Not really. He doesn't approve of lady doctors. But from what Dr. Hudson used to tell me, he's a bit of a pain. Well, apparently he's had some sort of an attack. Yes, he's been having some sort of an attack, I believe, for the past 30 years. Ah. Personally, I think Mr. Medwin was the main reason Dr. Hudson went to the Bahamas. <laughs> Still. <laughs> Still, you better go, Mike. You never know. Yes, quite. Perhaps you should take the car. We'll go to lunch by cab. OK, well, maybe I'll join you in the restaurant later. Maybe, but knowing Mr. Medwin, I doubt it. Oh, hell. Language. <clears throat> the doctor. Good afternoon, Mrs. Medwin. Uh, Miss Medwin, I am his sister. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Medwin. Uh, tell me what happened exactly, th this attack he had. I don't know. Terence was with him at the time. Terence? His son. Oh, I see. Uh, do you all live here? Oh, good gracious, no. It would have been his birthday tomorrow. We all came here to celebrate it with him. I think it's a strain of having so many strangers around that brought it on. His own family are hardly strangers, Mrs Jenkins. Anyway, it's lucky we're all here to see that he's looked after properly. If you're wanting anything further, Doctor, you have only to ring for me. He's had heart trouble for years, Doctor. Lord knows how he survived so long. I'm good for a long time yet, woman. Get out! I want to talk to the Doctor. <laughs> Can't wait to get their hands on me money. They're all the same. How are you feeling, Mr. Medwin? What? You're not Dr. Hudson. No, uh, he's gone away. I'm filling in for him. Who are you? I'm Dr. Upton. Oh. Uh, what happened exactly? Well, I suddenly felt very peculiar all over. I had to be helped into bed. Is that all? You just felt peculiar? All over, Doctor. All over. I see. Must you? Why not? I'm not paying for it. The doctor's with your father now. I'm afraid he's failing fast. It's only a matter of time. Oh, poor old boy. Still, he's had a good innings, the old basket. And thank you for cleaning the upholstery. It'll save me the trouble when I get it home. And really, it may interest you to know that he promised me all the furniture years ago, when the time came for him to be called by the angels. Oh, yes? Well, it may interest you to know that dear Mrs. Jenkins told me the old man had had all the furniture labelled, and that this particular piece comes to me. What? It says so on the label. Oh, so you've looked, have you? Well, of course I haven't, no. Where is this label, pray? Underneath. <laughs> have you no respect? Ah. Oh, there it is. What does it say? Yeah. It's mine. Ha, ha, ha. I don't believe you. Ahem. <laughs> you can tell me the truth, Doctor. I can take it. The truth is, Mr. Medwin, I can't find a single thing wrong with you. As far as I'm concerned, you're as sound as a bell. But my heart. Well, from what you said, your attack consisted of you feeling faint and going to bed. I expect you just got a bit overexcited, what with your family being here. But don't worry, you'll be all right for your birthday tomorrow. But aren't you going to prescribe something for me? No. By the look of things, you seem to have quite enough already. Oh, which one should I take? Oh, I shouldn't think it makes much difference. Um, here we are. This is a tonic that'll keep your appetite up. Try that a couple of times a day. What? Oh, I see. Look, I'll write it out for you, OK? Uh, uh... Believe me, you're not ill. But if it makes you any happier, I'll uh, call back later this evening. Meanwhile, just take the tonic, all right? Uh, if you say so, Doctor. I only hope you know what you're doing. No. What does it say? 
Ah, Mike, there you are. You missed a delightful lunch. Oh, don't worry. I managed to grab a sandwich on the way back. Was it a nice sandwich? No. Pity. Coffee, Dr. Upton. Oh, thank you, Jarvis. How was old Mr. Medwin? Oh, he was quite all right. Hadn't had an attack at all. Oh, Dr. Hudson used to end up having to prescribe him some harmless tonic or other just to keep him quiet. I know. He had more bottles there than an off-license. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dr. Whiteman, Sir Julius. Uh, it's a pity you couldn't have joined us for lunch, Mike. You could have shared our lobster. It really was delicious. Well, thank you for uh, telling me. Mm. Delightful. Still, that's the price you busy young doctors have to pay. Well, yes, I know. As as I can. wouldn't mind, except that old fake was as fit as a fiddle. Mr. Medwin has just died. <laughs> Are you sure he was all right when you saw him? But he can't have just died. He was as fit as a fiddle. Well, he isn't now. He appears to have turned up his toes. Well, I mean, what of? Well, you better go and see. Yes, I nailed death certificate. But that... I mean, I, I didn't... He was, he was per... I'd better go. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, <laughs> what are we waiting for? Ah, you're Dr. Upton. I am Terence Medwin. Have you been in to see him? Yes, I'm afraid he's gone. But not forgotten. Uh, how do you do, Doctor? David Weintraub, solicitor. How do you do? Uh, got the will. What? They didn't waste much time, did they? Uh, actually, I think they sent for me before they sent for you. What a tragedy. What a tragedy. My wife, Joy. <laughs> been a terrible shock to all of us a terrible shock we're very grateful to you doctor for all you've done but i don't expect there's any more you can do now except sign the old death certificate oh, please no. don't talk like that terence have you got the form doctor yes yes i have then sign away doctor sign away and we'll all bid you a cheery good night as you hurry home from this house of doom oh, terence something wrong doctor hmm? oh no not really it's just that i'm not absolutely sure about the cause of death oh. surely it was his heart wasn't it Paul well of Sam? course it was his heart we all know he's been suffering with his heart for years well i don't know that. but i am telling you it was his heart all right god rest him well i'm sorry but dr upton he's dead isn't he that's all that matters so you just sign that little chitty and mr ween Traub here can tell us who gets the loot look i'm sure this must all be most distressing for you but i'm afraid i'd rather not commit myself i, I can't sign the death certificate what for god's sake but you must mustn't he uh, not if he has any doubts so what happens now you have to be a post-mortem oh. Quite usual in cases of sudden, unexpected death. Unexpected? We've all been expecting it for 30 years. <laughs> Does this mean you can't read the will? Well, yes, I, I can read the will if you like, but uh, in the unlikely event of death being found to be due to unnatural causes... Please read it. All this is quite distasteful enough without that sort of remark. Oh, all right. It looks as if they think someone did the old man in. Don't be silly. So this is where we find out who had the motive. <coughs> <laughs> I, Thomas William Medwin, being of sound mind, hereby give instruction that my property and possessions should be thus distributed after my death. The furniture and contents of my house shall be shared according to the labels fixed thereunder too between my sister Grace Emily Medwin and my only son Terence Thomas Medwin. <laughs> The remainder, in its entirety... Yes. I, I, I feel I, I, I must warn you at this point that this testament, having been drawn up without the benefit of legal advice, there, there may be certain objections in law... Get on with it! Yes. The, uh, the remainder, in its entirety, I herewith bequeath to my doctor. <gasps> Good God! <laughs> are our chief source of income. Really? Oh, yes. The snag is most of our old codgers are so well-bred they last for years. <laughs> I've often thought of trying to nudge some of them into the crematorium. <laughs> <laughs> Saw through their wooden legs or something. <laughs> Mike's been a hell of a time at the post-mortem. You don't think they kept him in, do you, for doing the old boy in? <laughs> I sincerely hope not. It would be most inconvenient. Ah, oh, here he is. Where are the handcuffs, Mike? <laughs> 
Any chance of a cup of tea? No. Tea? I should have thought you'd be on champagne. What? Oh, with all your inheritance on the way. Oh, that's not mine. He meant Dr. Hudson. He left it to his doctor. As far as the law is concerned, you're his doctor. Well, whoever gets it, I'm glad it won't be any of those creepy relatives. You know, I'm sure one of them thought they were going to clean up and did him in. He was murdered then? Well, they don't seem to know what it was. Well, does it look fishy? Hmm, sort of. They found something a bit sinister in his stomach. Bullets? No. <laughs> A small trace of strychnine. Strychnine? Really? Well, that's hardly surprising. Old Medwin's been stuffing himself with strychnine and iron mixture ever since Hudson first saw him. That's he? You knew that. You gave him another lot the other day, didn't you? Did I? Yes, you remember. You said he was perfectly healthy. So you just gave him another bottle of the juice to keep him happy. And he dropped dead. <laughs> Yes, I know, but uh, that couldn't have killed him, could it? No, no. Not if you kept him on the prescribed dose, which I presume you did. Yes, I read it up from again, actually. Twice an hour, right? Twice an hour? Uh, I mean, twice a day. Sorry. You did put twice a day, didn't you? Yes, of course. But that was just a slip of the tongue. Mike, you can be honest with me. Don't be ridiculous. I wrote it for him again, twice an hour, mm. a day. <laughs> I think I'd have done the same for 50,000 quid. What? 50,000. That's what Dr. Whiteland says he's worth. Wow. No wonder those relatives gave me a funny look. It wouldn't surprise me if Terence did him in. Old Medwin's son. I'm, I'm sure he... Oh, you're just trying to direct suspicion away from yourself. I think you've both been reading too many Agatha Christie's. Dr. Upton, there are two persons to see you. What's wrong with them? They are policemen. Policemen? <laughs> they say they want a few words with you, Dr. Upton. Quick, hide in the loft. I'll have a horse around the back in five minutes. <laughs> you better speak to them. It's only a routine inquiry. Dr. Upton? Yes? It's only a routine inquiry, sir. <laughs> is it about Mr. Medwin? Yes, it is, as a matter of fact. I'm Detective Sergeant Holmes. Holmes? Yes, Holmes. <laughs> and this is Constable... Watson? <laughs> Congratulations, sir. You are the 1,000th member of the witty public to crack that one this year. Uh, sorry. Oh, don't apologise, sir. I find it highly droll. I'm sorry I haven't got my big curly pipe and my funny tweed deerstalker hat. Alas, I have forgotten them. Now, unless you have any more literary quips for us, perhaps we could be left alone with Dr Upton for a few moments. Uh, yes, of course. I'll see you back at the digs, Mike. Call in and see us at Baker Street sometime. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> May we uh, sit down? Yes, yes, of course. Hmm. Now, you are, I believe, Mr. Medwin's doctor, is that right? Yes, I was. Was? Well, he's dead now, isn't he? Indeed he is. Yes, dead. And how long did you treat Mr. Medwin? Um, about ten minutes. <laughs> But he was your patient. Yes, but I only saw him the once, just before... Just before he died. <laughs> Hard luck, that, eh? <laughs> Did Mr. Medwin say he had any intention of leaving any sort of legacy? No, I knew nothing about that. Oh, so you didn't know that in his will he bequeathed the major portion of his estate to his doctor? Oh, yes, I knew that. Oh, you did know? No, I, I mean, I know now, but, but I didn't know then. Uh, he read the will while I was there. Mr. Medwin? <laughs> no, Weintraub, the solicitor. But I didn't know about it when I saw him, Medwin, before he was killed. Killed? <laughs> I don't think we mentioned anything about Mr. Medwin being killed, did we, Constable? No, I, I mean died. Um, before he died. You don't know yet, do you? No, indeed. Indeed we don't. <laughs> it was very sudden. I, I didn't expect him to die. I did not expect him to die. <laughs> You're not writing that down. No, 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 sir. If I want a statement, I shall be back in due course. You do appreciate we have to make these inquiries. Oh, yeah. Yes. Did you prescribe this? No. That isn't your writing? Yes. And you wrote it for Mr. Medwin? Yes, but I didn't prescribe it. It's his dosage for his usual mixture. It's a tonic. Uh, pick me up. Let him down there, didn't it? <laughs> What's in it? Strychnine and iron. Strychnine? Yes, but he didn't die of strychnine poisoning, if that's what you're thinking. Because if he 
had, he, he would have had convulsions, and he didn't. Oh, you were there, were you? Yes, but before and after, but not while he... <laughs> no. No. And how often did you tell Mr. Medwin to take this uh, tonic? Twice a day. That's what it says there, is it? I'm afraid I can't read it. Yes, yes, that's what it says. Twice a day. Yes, well, I'll take your word for it. Twice a day. Yes, definitely. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry to have troubled you, Doctor, but at least you've uh, given us something to work on. Have I? Oh, yes. <laughs> we'll see ourselves out. Oh, and uh, if there's anything you feel you want to tell us, you know where to get in touch with us, don't you? Yes, Baker Street. <laughs> Yes, very funny. <laughs> Baker Street. Yeah. They think I did it. Dick? Dick? Come in here a minute, would you? No, no. Mummy told me never to go into a strange boy's bedroom. Look, can you usually read my prescriptions? Of course not. Nobody can read prescriptions. You know that. It's the doctor's rule. Prescriptions must always be illegible so that the public will regard us as men of mystery. <laughs> what does that say? Oh, it's a beer do. Uh, twice, uh, twice a day. Oh, you're not still worried about that, are you? Well, the police are. What? I'm sure they think Medwin couldn't read my note and took an overdose. Oh, nonsense. And what's more, I'm not even sure they don't think I did it intentionally. Well, they don't know Medwin was bumped off, and if he was, why should they think it was you? Well, because I've got the medical training to make it look like an accident. And I had the opportunity. And £50,000 worth of motive. Oh. Mike, why did you do it? Oh, thanks. You're a great comfort. Never mind. You'll have 50,000 quid to defend yourself with. You can slip 20,000 to the judge and that leaves 30,000 to give to me to keep quiet about what I know. You'll get off all right. I'm not laughing. Oh, you should be. Oh. Oh, stop fretting and go to bed. It'll sort itself out. Sort itself? How can it possibly sort itself out? Don't be so silly. Look, you've got all day tomorrow to worry about that. Oh, thanks. You've been a great help. Ah. Well, good night. Sweet dreams.
your murderer here in this courtroom. <laughs> no! 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 be hanged by the neck twice an hour twice an hour twice an hour twice a day 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 Dick, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. My writing's not that bad. I didn't do it. For heaven's sake, calm down and forget about it. Uh, but you know I didn't do it, don't yes, you? Yes, I know, but look, you can't do anything about anything until they finish their inquiry. Yeah, but you've you... got to be patient. You never know the killer until the last page. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Look, Mike, I don't know who done it, but it won't be you. Oh, I hope not. As you know, the circumstances surrounding Mr. Medwin's death... Oh, shut up! ...did appear somewhat less than clear-cut, which did necessitate the holding of further inquiries and a post-mortem, which in turn held up the final settlement of the will. Uh, considerable inquiries were also necessary by the coroner's officer to look into the possibility of foul play. Oh. And the coroner's report, which I have here in my hand, comes to the conclusion that in the case of Thomas William Medwin deceased, the cause of death was extreme old age. Ah. <laughs> this means that I can now tell you what you all want to know. Who gets the money? Ah. Yes. Now, as you know, in Mr. Medwin's will, he left the bulk of his estate to his doctor. Uh, this amounts to, uh, after deduction of death duty and outstanding debts, £72,432. Good. God. Oh, good grief. I'm sorry, Dr. Upton, but it has been decided beyond all doubt that the bequest was intended not for your good self, but for Dr. Hudson. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the matter has been further complicated by the discovery of a new will oh. uh, dated the 12th of January and lodged at the bank. And according to the terms of this will, the money and the estate go in their entirety uh, not to Dr. Hudson, uh, nor indeed to Dr. Upton, but to Miss Grace Emily Medwin, Mr. Medwin's sister. Oh, you would come and work for me, Mrs. Jenkins. Oh. Do you mean to say she cops a lot? The lot, yes. Oh, shut up! Well, I'll be off now. Nice to have met you. Uh, doctor, uh, just a moment. I wonder... If you would give me a little professional advice. Yes, of course, certainly. It's my aunt, Miss Medwin. She's not been very well lately. Her heart. I wonder if you could prescribe for her a tonic. This will... Oh, no! <laughs>
was a good morning's work. Yes, you were a bit busy. Yes, I'm happy to say. <laughs> Money. That's all you're ever worried about. You didn't tell me. No, no, I'm not going to have you lads squabbling. You've worked very hard. And I'm going to treat you both to lunch. Fantastic. How about wheelers and some lobster tummy door? Ooh, what a delightful thought. Hello, Dr. White and surgery. No, I'm afraid Dr. Hudson isn't here anymore. I'm standing in for him. Can I help you? Mr. Medwin. Well, how is he now? Right, well, don't do anything and I'll be over as soon as I can. All right? Bye-bye. I'm sorry, it seems one of our patients has been taken seriously ill. Mr. Medwin. Yes, do you know anything about him? Not really. He doesn't approve of lady doctors. But from what Dr. Hudson used to tell me, he's a bit of a pain. Well, apparently he's had some sort of an attack. Yes, he's been having some sort of an attack, I believe, for the past 30 years. Ah. Personally, I think Mr. Medwin was the main reason Dr. Hudson went to the Bahamas. <laughs> Still. <laughs> Still, you better go, Mike. You never knew. Yes, quite. Perhaps you should take the car. We'll go to lunch by cab. OK, well, maybe I'll join you in the restaurant later. Maybe, but knowing Mr. Medwin, I doubt it. Oh, hell. Language. <clears throat> the doctor. Good afternoon, Mrs. Medwin. Uh, Miss Medwin, I am his sister. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Medwin. Uh, tell me what happened exactly, th this attack he had. I don't know. Terence was with him at the time. Terence? His son. Oh, I see. Uh, do you all live here? Oh, good gracious, no. It would have been his birthday tomorrow. We all came here to celebrate it with him. I think it's a strain of having so many strangers around that brought it on. His own family are hardly strangers, Mrs Jenkins. Anyway, it's lucky we're all here to see that he's looked after properly. If you're wanting anything further, Doctor, you have only to ring for me. He's had heart trouble for years, Doctor. Lord knows how he survived so long. I'm good for a long time yet, woman. Get out! I want to talk to the Doctor. <laughs> Can't wait to get their hands on me money. They're all the same. How are you feeling, Mr. Medwin? What? You're not Dr. Hudson. No, uh, he's gone away. I'm filling in for him. Who are you? I'm Dr. Upton. Oh. Uh, what happened exactly? Well, I suddenly felt very peculiar all over. I had to be helped into bed. Is that all? You just felt peculiar? All over, Doctor. All over. I see. Must you? Why not? I'm not paying for it. The doctor's with your father now. I'm afraid he's failing fast. It's only a matter of time. Oh, poor old boy. Still, he's had a good innings, the old basket. And thank you for cleaning the upholstery. It'll save me the trouble when I get it home. Oh, really? It may interest you to know that he promised me all the furniture years ago when the time came for him to be called by the angels. Oh, yes? Well, it may interest you to know that dear Mrs. Jenkins told me the old man had had all the furniture labelled and that this particular piece comes to me. What? It says so on the label. Oh, so you've looked, have you? Well, of course I haven't, no. Where is this label, pray? Underneath. <laughs> Have you no respect? Ah, oh, there it is. What does it say? Uh, it's mine. Ha, ha, ha. I don't believe you. Uh, <clears throat> you can tell me the truth, Doctor. I can take it. The truth is, Mr. Medwin, I can't find a single thing wrong with you. As far as I'm concerned, you're as sound as a bell. But my heart. Well, from what you said, your attack consisted of you feeling faint and going to bed. I expect you just got a bit overexcited, what with your family being here. But don't worry, you'll be all right for your birthday tomorrow. But aren't you going to prescribe something for me? No. By the look of things, you seem to have quite enough already. Oh, which one should I take? Oh, I shouldn't think it makes much difference. Um, here we are. This is a tonic that'll keep your appetite up. Try that a couple of times a day. What? Oh, I see. Look, I'll write it out for you, OK? Uh, 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 Believe me, you're not ill. But if it makes you any happier, I'll uh, call back later this evening. Meanwhile, just take the tonic, all right? Uh, if you say so, Doctor. I only hope you know what you're doing. Now, what does it say? 
Ah, Mike, there you are. You missed a delightful lunch. Oh, don't worry. I managed to grab a sandwich on the way back. Was it a nice sandwich? No. Pity. Coffee, Dr. Upton. Oh, thank you, Jarvis. How was old Mr. Medwin? Oh, he was quite all right. Hadn't had an attack at all. Oh, Dr. Hudson used to end up having to prescribe him some harmless tonic or other just to keep him quiet. I know. He had more bottles there than an off license. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Whiteman, Sir uh, It's a pity you couldn't have joined us for lunch, Mike. You could have shared our lobster. It really was delicious. Well, thank you for telling me. Mm. Delightful. Still, that's the price you busy young doctors have to pay. Yes, I know. As as I can. wouldn't mind, except that old fake was as fit as a fiddle. Mr. Medwin has just died. <laughs> Are you sure he was all right when you saw him? But he can't have just died. He was as fit as a fiddle. Well, he isn't now. He appears to have turned up his toes. Well, I mean, what of? Well, you'd better go and see. Yes, I nailed death certificate. But, uh, I mean, I, d I didn't... He was... He was per I'd better go. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, <laughs> what are we waiting for? <laughs> Dr. Upton. Ah, you're Dr. Upton. <laughs> I am Terence Medwin. Have you been in to see him? Yes, I'm afraid he's gone. But not forgotten. Uh, how, how do you do, Doctor? David Weintraub, solicitor. How do you do? Uh, got the will. What? They didn't waste much time, did they? Well, actually, I think they sent for me before they sent for you. What a tragedy. What a tragedy. My wife, Joy. <laughs> has been a terrible shock to all of us, a terrible shock. We're very grateful to you, Doctor, for all you've done. But I don't expect there's any more you can do now except 